Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bible study this today, this afternoon. We are going to be talking uh, from the subject when God is silent, when God is silent. Um, we talked this weekend um, talking about uh, when God says no. And a lot of times God's silence can seem like a no, right? When you're sitting there like, all right, Lord, is this going to happen? Okay, God, <laughs> any day now, any minute now, and it could seem like God's being silent. And so that's what we want to uh, focus on today. All right. Any, any uh, questions so far? No? Yes? Yes, no? All no, right. not All right, we're going to do an overview of what we're going to cover. Uh, we're going to talk about what does it mean? Uh, what does silence mean? Uh, what are some ways God is silent? And how do we operate? when God is silent, and we're going to focus on Psalms 13. Now, the reason why, because I was feeling today, and maybe I should explain, the reason why I kind of run the Bible study like this, I want to give you practical application, but then I also want to back it up with scripture, okay? No point, because I've seen people have Bible studies, and it's be more about people's opinion than it is actual Bible, all right? It's not what we do here. It's not how we handle business, Okay. In Bible study, we're going to be studying the Bible, but I also want to make sure that it's applicable to our lives, okay? So that's why I kind of do Bible study. Even though we talk about a subject, we still want to ground it in Scripture, all right? Everything we do should be grounded in Scripture, okay? If I get up one Sunday and I'm preaching and it's all my personal opinions, that is not what we're, that is not right, and you, you very well should call me out on it, Okay? You need to hear the word. I don't understand these preachers. I ain't talking about anybody in particular who get up on Sundays and we all know we should be doing. We, I don't want to hear your opinions on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. I don't care. What I want to hear is what thus says the Lord. All right. And that's what we should all be presenting. What thus says the Lord. Amen. <laughs> all right. And so that's why we do it away. Okay. So what does silence mean? All right, we're gonna need your Bibles. Can somebody, okay. So we're gonna run through it real quick then we'll look at the scripture. First scripture says, we're going, reason why God is silent sometimes means we're going through a test. All right, somebody read Job 34 and 29 for us. Job 34 and 29. Uh, where is Job? Just before Psalms. It reads as when he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? All right. Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only. All right. So this is a lead. Uh get ready to tell Job about himself. <laughs> um, but the point Ali he was trying to make is if God decides to hide his face, nobody can force him. Okay. That's one of the things you have to keep in mind. God about God's silence. You, we'll talk more about this later. I don't want to jump the gun, but remember Job is going through it and Job's frustration is what God is not telling him why he's going through what he's going through. He's looking for answers. Right. He's looking for answers. So sometimes Job, and we know we know this as the reader, Job is being what by God? Tested. He's being tested by God, right? And so we don't know. And so you got to think about it. I heard some scholar says, uh, I think it was J.I. Packer who was saying, Job didn't know that he was being tested by God until he got to heaven and could ask God himself. Think about that. The whole time, we know why Job's going through it, but the whole time Job is going through this, he doesn't know why he's going through this, right? Got to keep that in mind. I think he knew before he got to heaven, though. Yeah, I think he found out, but I mean. <laughs> all that blessing he came at the end. <laughs> that was early. The back, but, but, but the other thing is, the scripture doesn't tell us that, per se, for, per se, right? It doesn't come out and say Job knew, but, you know, he probably got a good idea. Job was being tested, all right? So sometimes when we're going through tests, yes. God is silent. Yes, Reverend Parrish, you got something to say? 
Yeah, I was gonna say that's just like us. When we're going through, we don't know we're being tested. We don't know the reason until we come on the other side and say, oh, that was a test. Oh, that was for my good. Oh, that was, it's always on the other side. Yeah, I tell people, this is why the Lord allowed Moses to only see his back, not because, uh, not just because he would die, but it's also a precursor for us. We don't usually don't see God till he's already passed through, until the situation is already done. Then we look back over our lives and go, oh, like you said, Aaron Paris, that's why we had to go through this. That's why I had to go through that, right? It's usually not until God's already done moved on to something else that we finally get, we get the realization as to what he was doing. All right, let's keep going. All right, point number two, sometimes we read my God is silence. We're outside, uh, we're out of line with the will of God. We have to understand when God gives us his word, he gives us his word so we understand what to do. Many times, we want to do what we want to do and expect God to co-sign it. That's not how it works, okay? That's not how it works. So somebody read Isaiah 62 for us. 62 and 1. I will speak out to encourage Jerusalem. I will not be silent until she is saved. And her victory shines like a torch in the night. All right. Uh is God's a lot of times if you look at especially looking at when they get ready to go into the exile God is trying to get the children of Israel to come back in line with what he called them to do right um a lot of times you hear people say oh God of the Old Testament was all hellfire and brimstone no it's the same God God is just patient but eventually God's patience wears out right um yeah. How many of us have done some stuff, done some stuff, and then finally we, you know, we got into some trouble? And the first thing a lot of us want to do is say, Lord, why'd you do this to me? <laughs> oh, crazy. You've been doing it to yourself. You just <laughs> reap it what you sow more, a lot of times more than anything. All right. Next point. We are in sin. Okay. Somebody read Isaiah 64 and 13. No, 12. 64 and 12. Will thou refrain thyself from these things, O Lord? Will thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore? All right. <laughs> yeah. So Isaiah's like, Severely. Come, on. Like, come on, Lord, you gonna you gonna do all this to us? Um, we often what's funny is we 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 lament about the, the gravity of our pain, but don't think about the gravity of heartbreak we done brought on the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so we, we got to understand we are sinful creatures and sometimes God's silence is a sign that we are living, we're not living where we're supposed to. Uh, for those of you who've been out in the world a little bit, God gets real silent when you're out there doing your own thing, right? <laughs> oh, yes, he does. He gets real quiet when you're out there trying to be the master of your own universe, basically. And so a lot of times the reason why God is silent is because we are living in sin. All right, somebody read First Kings. All right, next one is the volume of our life is too loud. Um, okay, I think I can read this one. I got a second. Go ahead. Go ahead. First King 19, 11 through 13. And it reads, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountain apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Verse 13, when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his head and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then the voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? All right. Now, Elijah had just came from Carmel. He had just had his big showdown. And then when Jezebel <laughs> said he was going to, she was going to kill him, he ran off scared, right? And so God was reminding him, uh, we oftentimes look for God in ginormous things, right? We want God to speak down to us from heaven. We want to have the burning bush experience. We want all these different ways for God to communicate with us. And oftentimes God's communication is pretty quiet. It is, and this is why, um, as Reverend Parrish loves to promote on the prayer call, that you have your quiet time, right? Um, the volume of our lives are so loud, a lot of times we can't hear what God is saying. 
It's not because uh, um, I used to um, that that verse now takes on different meaning. I can't figure. I'll Google it while we're while I'm saying it though. Is where it says, um, "Be still and know that I'm the Lord." Mm -hmm. um, it, it used to, you know, I should think that just meant go, you know. Um, I, I thought that meant, you know, like my grandma said, go sit down somewhere. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but don't call me, I call you. Right. <laughs> um, Psalms 46 and 10. He says, be still and know that I'm God. I will exalt. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. A lot of times we're just trying to do too much. <laughs> and sometimes mm -hmm. God needs us to go be still. Go sit down somewhere. I got this. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got this under control. I don't need your help. I don't need your two cents. I have this. And so we have to learn how to be the silent sometimes is a way for us to just to really hear what God has to say. Right. Mm -hmm. The volume of our lives is so loud. Sometimes we got work, we got school, we got children, we got grandchildren, we got jobs, we got social life. We got all these things that require our attention. God is not going to scream over a lot of times the volume of your lives. He wants you to steal away and get that quiet time. Look at Jesus. You read the scriptures, Jesus is constantly doing what? Going off by himself to pray, going off by himself to pray. Because even he understood that that quiet, that stillness is necessary. Um, uh, I remember I used to hate for it to be quiet. Now I long for it. It excites me to be <laughs> alone with God. Yes, Reverend Parrish. You know, and I was going to say something about we are in sin when you were talking about sometimes God allows us to go through to show us our ways mm -hmm. our non, and not necessarily just so sinful, but not according to his will. So when you outside his will, it's still sin. Yes. It may not be violating the Ten Commandments. And, and I was immediately reminded of my prayer request when I turned 50 and at my prayer breakfast. And I said, I want my next 50 to be better than my last 50. But you know what the old folks say, be careful what you ask for. Yes, Lord, because he might say yes. He starts showing <laughs> me me. And he did. He starts showing me my ways. And it kind of couples into First Kings, the, the volume, the loudness. Can you hear me? And I, I scream and I shout and I praise God that I trust him. But he was always saying all along, but can I trust you? Hmm. Oh. And so those go hand in hand for me. I mean, they speak volumes. Yeah, um, we yeah. So we got to understand that the volume of our life can be too loud. All right. Next one, when we're waiting, a lot of times we feel like God is silent when we're waiting. How many of you are impatient and hate to wait? Mm, me, my hands up. <laughs> <laughs> my voice is up. <laughs> right, uh, and then it doesn't help. We live in a microwave society now, right? where legit stuff that used to take us forever, we could have at our fingertips. Me and my friend Brandon uh, joke about how we remember when we wanted to know something, we would have to write it down, go to the library, research that thing that we're trying to find <laughs> and see if we could look, you know, and then research what we're trying to find. And now when we're having debates and arguments, at the end, at like that, I can pull up an article that I that I found, or you know, find something to either support my argument or or, or even tear down my argument. Um, there was something I've been quoting somebody as saying um, for the longest, and the other day something said maybe you should research that, and I looked it up and realized the person didn't say that, and I had been mm -hmm. saying they said this forever, and I was like, oh, I need now I know better. I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna change my ways, and mm -hmm. so. The fact now that we have everything instantaneous, right? We can go on Amazon and order something and in two days, it's here. And some of us can be complaining about that. Like, I ain't waiting two days. I can go down there. <laughs> I can go here and go pick it up today, right? I mean, think about yeah. it. How much, um, I remember uh, as a kid, waiting on the Sears catalog, right? You used to hope my mom would order me something from the Spiegel book, <laughs> right? And now, Anything I want, I can go get, you know, we have, you know, as long as you got the money, of course, but you know, everything's like instant, right? Uh, think about, uh, so one of my, um, you know, me and my wife like to cook and one of my favorite dishes is this Vietnamese noodle soup called pho. 
And I kept trying to find little cheats so that way I could do it. <laughs> like I could do it instantly. But every time I do it instantly, it doesn't taste good because what makes it great is how much time people spend making the broth, right? Taking that time and putting that effort into making the broth is what actually makes the whole soup, right? So I tried, the quickest way I found is I found some canned stuff and I doctored it. It'd be good, but it's not great, right? Mm. I realized only way for this thing to get the way I want it, I got to put the time in, right? I got to wait on it. And so now I've learned that my patience will be rewarded. And so now, I so uh, when I make it now, I usually start it at night and let it simmer all night. So that way, by the time the morning time hit, oh, it's it's right. It's right then. All right. Uh, did we read uh, Habakkuk three, uh, 1 and 3? Somebody read that for us. Why do you make me see such trouble? How can you stand to look on such wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are all around me, and there is fighting and quarreling everywhere. I think I changed that. Read verse one, uh, Sister Green. Verse one. Yeah. Oh Lord, how long must I call for help before you listen, before you save us from violence? Why do you make me see such trouble? How can you stand to look on such wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are all around me, and there is fighting and quarrel everywhere. All right. He saw all this stuff. The, the prophet saw all these things going on. And he said, what? How long, Lord? How long must I sit here yeah. mm-hmm. He's waiting for God to move on this situation? And uh, sometimes we get upset with God thinking he's not moving fast enough not understanding that God is moving in his own timing and we don't understand that his patience might be to our benefit. I mean, what I mean might be to somebody else's benefit. Maybe he's being, maybe he's waiting on somebody to change their ways. You know, the Lord is, is, is trying, is always trying to get us to get right. Basically. Right. All right. Point number three. I mean, uh, last one, he chooses to be silent. Uh, Much like that verse in Job, we have to understand God reveals himself as he chooses. Okay. We can't, it, only reason we know anything about God is because God chooses to reveal himself to us, right? He chose to reveal himself to us in, uh, through the scriptures and through the prophets. If God does not choose to reveal himself, we don't know anything about him. It is much like our human relationships, right? Uh, when you first meet people, it's on a surface level, right? Hi, my name is Philmont. That's all you know about me, right? But as we become closer, then you start learning other stuff, where I'm from, what I like to eat. That's how we become, that's how we grow to a level of intimacy. It's the same thing with God. The only reason we know anything about God is because God chooses to for us to know about him, right? Mm-hmm. All right, somebody read John 11 and 6. John 11 and 6 says, When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. All right. I chose this verse because Mary and Martha were looking for Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Waiting for him to come and speak a word over their brother's life. But what did Jesus do? He stayed out longer. He tarried for a little while longer, right? And and let him die. Right. And let mm-hmm. him die. Mm-hmm. As some of y'all know, when y'all saw Jesus, y'all would have had some choice word for him, right? <laughs> now we want all of us would say we be holy and acting right. But if you uh, but if Jesus would have let somebody very close to we know he can save him. And we say, Jesus, mm-hmm. now look, now as a guy sick, Jesus, I need you to show up. Mm-hmm. And Jesus, I have up. never acted like Martha. <laughs> My neck rolls. I, 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 well, Arthur, don't let it roll like it used to, but I, I have neck right, rolls. Right, right. got some kind of, I wouldn't have said nothing, but <laughs> Jesus, oh, look, body language would have been on. <laughs> right. You've been giving Jesus this look. <laughs> Me, muddy. Yeah. Right. Think about now, people saying something now because remember when he get ready to raise Lazarus, it just says Jesus wept. It said what? He can save everybody else. Mm-hmm. 
Why could he, he could heal all the lepers? How come he couldn't heal his homie? Right? So, so there's been some, some of y'all, you want to be honest, you would have said something to Jesus like, that so. sister girl ran out there and caught him all by himself and charged him up. If you had been here now. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Had you shown up, uh -huh. my brother would not have died. <laughs> I think that Jesus is testing their faith. I said this once before, no one had agreed with me, mm -hmm. but I kind of believe that Jesus was testing their faith to let them know that he can raise Lazarus from the dead. Well, he uh, he pretty much says that to uh, Martha, right? Yeah. He says, I am the, re the resurrection, right? He mm -hmm. tells him, he said, I am, you know, I'm the resurrection. There ain't going to be, no, you got to wait till the last days. I'm here. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. I think it was a test of faith for everybody, right? Yeah. The disciples' faith, because remember, he said, "Let's go wake Lazarus up." He said, "Well, if he sleep, he'll be all right." Now nah, he dead. Mm -hmm. he like Jesus, last time you went over there, and people tried to kill you, right? <laughs> and then don't old... forget about the practical people, what they see with their eyes. Look, right. he stinks. Okay, it's too right. late now for all this. It's too right. That's the it's whole too point. Late. It's too late. Um, uh, I think I preached a sermon similar to this. And uh, the title of it was The Theology of It's Too Late. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us look at God and look at certain situations and say, Lord, it's too late. Mm -hmm. It's too late to do this. It's too late to fix it. It's too late. To sh but you know, God, and it's never too late for the Lord. Indeed. All right. Nope. Continue on. What are some ways God is silent? All right, let's look at that. Okay. I'm to pray so God is silent a lot of times when uh, when our prayers appear to be unanswered. Now we know as uh, believers, that God will, God hears our prayers. But you ever been praying for something and you've been praying and praying and praying and praying and you feel like you ain't seen no movement on it? And you like, because okay, he Lord. want us to wait. And you're like, all right, Lord, now you you said you hear my prayers, but I, brother, been praying. I haven't seen any, any movement, any nothing on it, right? So uh, somebody read for us this familiar passage in Daniel, Daniel 10, 11 through 13. Hmm. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, 11 through 13. Okay, oh yeah, greatly beloved, understandeth the word that I speak unto thee, and stand upright unto thee, am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. All right. So Daniel praying for the people. And imagine how Daniel felt God silence for 21 days. Nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. Nothing. I will legit, I will admit there's there was something that I prayed for. And it took years for God to answer that prayer. Mm -hmm. And I tell what it is. I remember, I remember saying all I wanted was a picture with me with all my kids, right? Just all my kids together, me in the picture with me and all my kids. And I think I started praying that prayer in like 20, no, it was before the was born. And then of course, when Zakai showed up, I was like, okay, now, you know, I really want this picture with all my kids together. Never came to be until 2017. And I remember that prayer. And I said, you know, and I was like, okay. It wasn't denied, it was just delayed. And so uh, sometimes we can feel God is silent when we pray for things and it doesn't happen in what we, what we would consider reasonable timing, right? <laughs> uh, all right, point, next point. 
when we don't see him moving, okay? A lot of times we think God is silent, much like the what, example I just gave, where we like, okay, Lord, I don't see nothing happening. You must have forgotten about us. But God yeah. sometimes is working things out in the background beyond yeah. our, um, beyond what we see. So somebody read for us 2 Kings chapter number 7, verses 12 through 15. Okay, I grabbed it. It's right. Reverend Parrish. This is the Tony Evans translation. Mm -hmm. The diseased men came and called to the city's gate, gatekeepers and told them, we went to the Aramanian camp and no one was there. No human sounds. There was nothing but tethered horses and donkeys and the tents were intact. The, gate, the gatekeepers called out and the news was reported to the king's household. So the king got up in the night and said to his servants, let me tell you what the Armenians have done to us. They know we are starving. So they have left the camp to hide in the open country thinking when they come out of the city, we will take them alive and go into the city. But one of his servants responded, please let messengers take five of the horses that are left in the city. Their fate is in like the entire Israelite community who will die. So let's send them and see. The messenger took two chariots with the horses and the king sent them after the Armenians, Armenian army and saying, go and see. So they followed them as far as the Jordan. They saw that the whole, the whole way was littered with clothes, equipment, and the Armenians had thrown off in their haste. The messengers returned and told the king. Is that it? Yep, that's it. All right. So notice the people thought for sure they were gone. They were being besieged. They were starving. And they thought God had forgotten about them, right? You could, you could definitely hear that God, it would seem like God's being silent in this time. But they get a word from these lepers who tell them, hey, we went to the camp because they made up in their mind. They said, hey, if we stay here, we're going to die. If we go into the city, we're going to die. Mm -hmm. We might as well give ourselves over to the, uh, to the Armenians. Maybe they'll let us live, right? But when they get there, they see that they've already fled. So they got all this plunder. They eating sandwiches. They all excited. And then they say, you know what? It'd be wrong for us to keep this to ourselves. Let us go tell the rest of the people what's going on, right? And so uh, a lot of times when we, a lot of times we think God is silent, he's actually working that thing out because they hadn't got the word just yet in the city that God had already brought them out of what they were, you know, I'm sure they were praying for. All right. All right. Last one. I mean, there's plenty more, but these are just the three, you know, three, you know, three examples. Well, he removes his hand from our lives, right? A lot of times we feel like God is silent when he's actually taking his hand up off of us. For those of us who have felt the touch of God, God's hand on our life, when he takes his hand off of us, you can tell that thing. You, mm -hmm. you can tell something ain't right, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, as old folks say, your prayers feel like they're hitting the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some, somebody read First Samuel 16 and 14 for us. The Lord's spirit left Saul and an evil spirit sent by the Lord tormented him. What is it? Tormented him? Mm-hmm. It. Yep. So hey, God's hand was on Saul. But after he disobeyed God, God took his hand off of him. And then he was tormented. He had these, I believe uh, Saul was bipolar. I mean, that's what we would call bipolarism <laughs> nowadays. I'm just saying because he go from <laughs> trying to kill David to, oh, David, I love you so much. And then two <laughs> weeks later, I'm going to kill your crazy. Man. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think he was bipolar. But that's what insecure people do. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Okay. All right. How do we operate in silence, in the silence of God? I like this quote from uh, Barbara Brown Taylor. Somebody read that for us. Most people are so used to wading through the noise that they do not even notice how deep it has gotten. I like that quote from uh, Robert Brown T Taylor um, because we are so accustomed to noise. We're so accustomed to sound that silence 
it's hard for us. Right? And so she has a book that I would suggest that you read. It's not that long. It's called When God is Silent. It's a very interesting book. All right, this is Barbara Brown Taylor herself. And uh, and so this is what she suggests. And these, this is, you know, I read the book. But these are some suggestions she got. God's silent is God's way of drawing, of getting our attention. Oh, yes. She gives, a, she gives an example of a poet, a Scot, I think he's Scottish. And he gets up and he starts talk, reading his poems, but he's speaking like this. In the beginning. And so the people are kind of, you know, he's speaking real softly. So the people are like, we can't hear him. He needs to speak up. And he gets to the point where he basically tells them, no, I don't need to speak up. You need to turn down and just listen harder. Sometimes God's silence is his God's way of getting us to listen harder to what he's trying to say. Right. All right. God uses silence to draw us closer to him. Right. Again, for those of us who are used to hearing from God and speaking to God, when, when God pulls away, and he's silent and we can't hear him. It's his way to get us to come closer. Right. Think about it. If somebody's sick and they're laying in a hospital bed and they can faintly speak, do you yell at them and say, no, speak up. What do you do? You get closer. So you can hear what they have to say. God sometimes uses that. He uses silence to get us to come closer, to hear from him. Okay. Last one. Silence is a good thing in the noisy world that we live in. Mm -hmm. We have to fight for silence sometimes. Um, one thing I suggest to preachers, I guess everybody should do it, but for preachers especially, take some time to get away from everything and just hear from the Lord. Yes. Especially if you are in the pastoral ministry, you need to schedule and carve out time. And I'm not talking about just like, oh, I'm going to go be in my main cave or she shed for this amount of time. But I'm talking about get away from everybody, everything. Um, I call it my me day. Um, and I try to schedule those uh, every so often. And uh, and uh, as uh, Reverend Parrish just said, when is your Sabbath? But this is a day where I go off. I usually go find a cheap hotel somewhere because one, because I'm cheap, ain't important, spend a whole bunch of money. <laughs> and I just sit there, I turn off the TV, some, you know, and I spend hours just sitting there in silence saying, okay, Lord, speak to me. I want to hear from you. Then he'll speak to me and then, you know, I get hungry. I go get something to eat, maybe go relax and like Reverend Parrish said in Sabbath, but to really just take a day to be still and hear from the Lord. It is of the utmost importance for all of us, but those of us in the ministry, especially because you got everybody at your attention, all these things after your attention, come to my program, prepare to prepare for this, do that. Silence is something that is necessary. Okay. Another good opportunity for us to get away from the noisy world is to practice this thing that I learned from this Catholic priest called centering prayer. And what it is, is this, it is legit because most of the time we pray, we're asking for stuff, right? Lord, give me this, give me that, so on and so forth, right? Or praying for people on their behalf, intercessory prayer. But sometimes but, but one thing of prayer is to sit in silence and to ask God to just kind of, um, you ever had to do an update on your phone? So yeah. What happens, <laughs> right? You have to connect to the charger and leave it alone so that the phone can download new information. Mm -hmm. We have to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We need to get an upgrade from God. And so we need to plug into him and just let him deposit stuff into us. Mm. And so Centering Prayer, there's an app you can download on your phone. It's called the Centering Prayer app. And you set it. And so um, what, what, happens is, what happens is this. We would read, he would read a, a bit of scripture and we legit would just sit in silence. Wouldn't say nothing. And so what he would suggest is, he said, thoughts will come to your head. He said, you know, you'll get some thoughts. He said, but treat the thoughts like a boat 
sailing on a, on a river, right? You recognize it, you recognize the thought, but let it just pass on by. And try your best to empty your mind and just sit in silence. I tell you, one minute of that seems like an eternity. You're like, oh my God, this seems like it's taking forever, right? But, but um, we got up to like 10 to 15 minutes of just sitting in silence. And something about that does something to your spirit. You have, I, I used to come out, I, after I was finished, I would have so many ideas and things because the Lord got a chance to, because a lot of times our prayers are one-sided conversations because mm. prayer is supposed to be a conversation between you and the Lord. Mm. And a lot of times we're constantly talking, but we're not listening to what the, what God has to say. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions, comments about any of this? Boy, Red Wheels, I messed up and turned that heat on. I'm regretting it. Yeah. Yep. Pastor, what Ooh. was that scripture about the whisper? It was second <laughs> king in your PowerPoint. We'll go back. We'll go back. Okay. We'll and then um, you're so right. And I find I come in the garage and I turn off the car and it's real quiet. I can't move. I just sit right there. And I stay there and often I even fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And when the children, I mean, this has been going on a long time. The children would come to the door with the cordless phone and wave and telling me somebody's on the phone. I said, I'm not home till I come in the house. This is my time. Cause I know it's on the noise, the being pulled, the nudge, but you are so right. And what jumped out at me and I had to go find it was revelations two mm -hmm. and 29. Anyone with an ear to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the church. And I am the church and the NIV, whosoever has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. And I have to rehearse that to myself, like be still and just listen. Right. That Remember that, remember that verse, uh, was it Psalms 46, be still and know that I'm the Lord. Sometimes mm -hmm. we just, sometimes because, because some of us, we're natural fixers, right? We see a problem, we want to fix it. And we have to remember Every problem isn't for us to fix. Yep. Every person isn't for us to fix. Yep. We have to understand, We maybe it's not our job to fix it. Maybe it's just our job just to listen. Maybe it's just our job just to be present. Maybe it's yep. our job just to, you know, do something else. It's not always our job to fix it, all right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's, Amen. First Kings, that's First Kings 19, 11 through 13. One of the things, especially in the ministry, you have to learn, it might not be your job to fix it. Even though mm. sometimes we think it is, it might not be your job to fix it. All right, let's keep going. All right, I, I found this on the uh, CRU, I guess that's crew.org. I, I like them. They have some interesting articles on there. And he says, what do we do? How do we operate in silence? One, sometimes when God is silent, we need to examine your life. Take some time to look over your life. See what's going on. See if there's something that's pulling you away from God. Sometimes God's silent is a, a, a time to do a check. God's silent is the check engine light of our life sometimes. Because mm -hmm. what happens when the check engine light comes on? Oh, Lord, I got to figure out what this is. It could be small. Mm -hmm. It could just mean you need an oil change. It mm -hmm. also could mean your whole transmission about to fall out. <laughs> you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? A check mm -hmm. engine light means go check it out. All right. Yeah. Number two, we have to accept God's authority. Meaning God, mm -hmm. God is silent because God may want to be silent. Okay. God may have a reason for being silent. And we have to accept, much like we talked about this weekend, God is sovereign. God can do whatever God chooses to do. Okay? We have no control over what God does. So sometimes God's silent is, is him exercising his authority. And we have mm. to just accept it. Point number three. God's silent a lot of times causes us to listen to what God has been saying. Um, some people will tell you, getting sick or going to the hospital sometime can save your life because it finally gets you to address some things you've been putting on the back burner, right? Oh, I'll go to the doctor later. Um, I'll, 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 I'll attend, you know, I'll take care of that later. I'll take care of, you know, we always think we got time for later. And then we sit in the hospital bed. It finally gives us a, a chance to go and, all right, let me sit down. Um, one of our bishops, he had to get hospitalized. Um, and he said, that, that probably was the, that, he said that hospitalization probably saved his life because it forced him to realize I need to take some risks. I need to pull away. I need to spend some, I need to Sabbath. Silence can be intimacy. Um, 
Has any of you ever read that book by Gary Chapman, The Five Love Languages? Mm -mm. It's a really good book because um, it teaches you how people receive and give love because not everybody receives love the same way, right? So one of the love right. languages is quality time, right? And so for me, quality time could just be we in the same room together. It doesn't have to be we have to be doing anything. Now, that doesn't work for everybody, right? I was talking to my cousin last night, and she said that's her. Her quality time is you're just – the fact that you are willing to be in the same room with me or, or, or share some of your space with me makes me feel happy, makes me feel loved, right? Mm -hmm. Now, her boyfriend, on the other hand, for quality time, I mean, let's go do something. Let's go be active. So even though they have the same love language, the way they express it cause some, you know, sometimes can cause some friction, right? <laughs> And so sometimes God's silence is God's way of being intimate, of being close, right? Mm -hmm. Just sitting there. Um, remember uh, that young love or that when you first met that person, y'all just be sit up, all cuddled up with each other. Ain't saying nothing. Just cuddled up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me say it. Let me say it the old school way. Y'all just laid up, shacked up <laughs> <laughs> all day long. <laughs> Don't have a care in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God wants that same, right. God wants that same level of intimacy where you just laid up with him and just spending time with him, right? Mm -hmm. He loves you that much sometimes that he will cause himself to be silent just so he can spend that time with you. Ain't that mm -hmm. wonderful that God loves you that much? That when you pull away, mm -hmm. he keeps pulling closer to you. And the other thing we have to remember, I like this last point, is keep talking to God even in the silence. Just because God is silent doesn't mean he doesn't hear what you're saying. Um, Rem Williams, I think you, uh, I don't know how many people are on right this moment, but as a man, you know, uh, just because I'm not looking at you don't mean I'm not listening. Hmm. Amen. Right? Just because Amen. I'm not chiming in every two seconds doesn't mean that I'm not listening to what you're saying, right? That That's old, true. What's that old saying? Uh, every closed eye ain't sleep. <laughs> 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 just because I don't, and it seems like I'm seeing you, don't mean I don't see you. I'm going see what's going on, right? All right. Any questions or comments about this list? Pastor, what was the first one uh, before you said accept his ways? What was the first one? Examine your life. Okay, examine. Okay. All right. All right. Let's continue on. All right, our focus scripture today is coming from Psalms 13. Psalms 13 is only six verses, and so we should be, we're going to move through this fairly quickly. I figured we could do a lot more talking on the front end because I knew the scripture itself wasn't going to take as long, um, but we'll get to it. Okay. Verse number one says, how long will thou, I did a King James for, for you, you know, because I know how much y'all love the King James. All right. Uh, actually, somebody read that. Psalms 13, verse one, whichever verse you want to read. How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever. How long will thou hide thy face from me? All right. This particular psalm is a psalm of David, and it's a psalm of lament. Um, one of the things that we have to understand is lament is something that happened often in the Bible. Um, when people were confused, they didn't know what to do, they would lament. and they would, But look who they lamented to. They didn't lament to their friends. They're going to go talk to God about it. And look what David is saying. How long will thou forget me, O oh Lord? Forever? Mm -hmm. Seems like it. When we're going through some stuff, it can seem like forever, right? Amen. Uh, rough patches a lot of times, even though they might end up being three months, six months, it can seem like forever. For those of us, uh, we're inching towards a year of really being in this pandemic. You know, a lot of us are saying, how long, Lord? How long is this thing going to last? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. how long are we going to have to carry with this thing? How long are we going to be uh, either outside or in the parking, you know, in the parking lot or on Zoom? When are we going to be able to get back to normal? Sidebar, I don't think we're, I don't think what we considered normal before is ever going to go back, but that's just me. Anyways, how long? And look what he says. How long would I hide thy face from me? Mm -hmm. So, we oftentimes, um, we look at God, uh, we talk about God hiding his face 
or forgetting him, he doesn't mean that God is, God is to forget about David, nor is he ignoring David, um, but David's longing for that intimacy that he once had with God. Some scholars believe that David's writing this Psalm as he's running from Saul, right? So you go, because we don't know how long that was. We know that he, we know that the, he spent like a year with the Philistines, but we don't actually know how long David was running from Saul per se. So imagine if you're David and it, I think he gets anointed. If I remember correctly, now I'm not sure. I thought he got anointed at 18, but he doesn't even get the throne until he turns 30. I could be right. Don't quote me on that one. Either way, even if that's the case, that's 12 years. Could you imagine year five, year six, year seven in this thing? You would be saying to the Lord, how long, Lord? <laughs> right? How long am I going to go through this? This dude's chasing me down. He's trying to kill me. I didn't do anything to him. Right? You could feel like God is being silent. Right? All right. Verse two. How long shall I take in my, how, how long shall I take counsel in my soul? Have it sorrow in my heart daily. How long? shall my enemies be exalted over me david's looking around and saying lord all this is going on where are you where are you in the midst of this how many of us have felt like that like you know everybody seems to be winning while i'm out here struggling right all right somebody read verse three look at me O lord my god and answer me restore my strength don't let me die. All right. So David is saying, hey, don't, don't, don't hide your face from me. Because hide, you know, we want God's face. We want God's presence. We want God's intimate intimacy. I like what he says to King James. He says, lighten my eyes. In other words, let your light shine so I can see you again. Right? Mm -hmm. Don't let me die. Keep, 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 keep walking with me, God. All right, verse four. Somebody read that for us. Least my enemies say. I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. And so David is saying, look, God, I'm full to be your God. Don't let my enemies take me out and then laugh about it afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. All right, read verse five. I, re I rely on your constant love. I will be glad because you will rescue me. Read verse six. Go ahead and just finish it off. I will sing to you, O Lord, because you have been good to me. All right, David understood. So look how look how this look how this Psalm of Lament moves. He starts off talking about the problem, feeling like God has forgotten him. Right. Mm -hmm. Then he moves into in verses um uh in verses uh four in verse four and saying, look. Don't let these people come against me. But I like how verse five and six shift. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. David reminds himself that God is still with him. And that's what we have to do a lot of times. Even though it may seem bleak, even though it may seem uh, troublesome, we have to understand God's mercy have not stopped. Somebody mm -hmm. said his mercies renew every day. Every day. What did the, what did they say in Lamentations 3? It says, great is thy faithfulness. Faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. So even in lament, we can still understand that God is still going to be faithful. All right. Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments, concerns, uh, anything that you learned today from this particular text, from anything that we said? Stay tuned for my sermon that I'm going to preach from this text. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Look, look, I, look, I'm serious. Hey, when I when I hear something, I shall be <laughs> writing it down, getting it right. Yeah, All right. right. All right. Anything else? Anybody got any comments? Hopefully, you got something from this uh, particular text today. I did, did Pastor. I can say I'm, mm -hmm. I'm. I have my notebook here, and I'm putting mm -hmm. it in. All right. Well, let us close out with prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this word. And God, we're asking that even when you're silent, remind us that you're still in the midst, that you still love us and will keep us and will guide us. God, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Go in peace. Okay. The peace of God go with you. All right. Okay. Amen. Good evening, everyone.